Hi again, everyone. Michael DeAngelis here on behalf of Mission Rejected. We are still deep in the depths of planning our next season. There have been fights. There have been hugs. More fights. More hugs. A little bit of cuddling. But that's just the normal way the porch room operates. So while we continue to work on that, we wanted to introduce you to yet another great show. What Did We Just Watch is a new movie trivia game show about movies that perhaps you'd rather not watch or maybe feel a little guilty about enjoying. Uh, on a normal episode, you would probably hear the Admiral himself, Bob Killian, as one of the regular panelists. But in this special Mission Rejected crossover, uh, Pete, John, and myself serve as the guest contestants, and we are uh, mercilessly drilled on 1997's The Saint, starring Val Kilmer. So if you love bad movies as much as we do, then we think you'll enjoy uh, us talking about this uh, not-so-classic film. It's got all the elements that make Mission Rejected fantastic. Disguises, cold fusion, uh, outrageous Russian accents. But somehow, Val Kilmer just drags the whole thing down. Well, that's my opinion anyway. Let's see what yours is as we will share with you the first round of What Did We Just Watch? The Saint. <sighs> Can't believe I'm doing this. So they said to meet me here at the Philadelphia train station. They didn't really explain who they were. They said that I would know them when I see them. Let me just pull up my, my PDA. Goldilocks here. Still waiting on the three bears. I've tried the porridge and I've climbed into bed. Just waiting for you. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, oh, please, after you. Oh. oh, no, my gravelly voiced friend. How magnificent. Uh, um, I can I help you guys? I had a question I needed to ask you. Do you know how many potatoes you can fit into a pillowcase? What kind of pillowcase? Like a throw pillow or like a bedroom pillow or what? Is that what he was supposed to say? I, uh, uh, Wait, I'm confused. I thought this was an audition for an oatmeal commercial. Is th um, that the passphrase that you were supposed to use? An oatmeal commercial? I didn't get that message. I'm sorry. Is there is there a script change about... Is there a copy for potatoes or pillowcases? Uh, hey, excuse me, Linda Ronstadt. Can you point me towards the Philadelphia train station? Um, we're in the Philadelphia train station, sir. My God. No wonder the rent check bounced. I've been subletting Platform 7. Well... I am just waiting for the three guys who are supposed to help me record my podcast. My normal panelists were not interested at all in watching 1997's The Staint, starring Val Kilmer. And so I'm waiting for three weirdos who I've heard from on the internet who said they would talk to me about it for three hours. No, uh, did you, say, you Val? say? Oh, oh you guys. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, oh, you'll all get your turn. <laughs> did you say Val Kilmer? Yes, Val Kilmer. Did you? S oh, I've never heard. Did of you a say oh. 1997's The Saint? Yes, I that did. was the answer to the question. The password. Okay, it is you. It's uh -oh. the guy we're supposed to meet here. Oh well, I would not have guessed that based on that passcode. Is maybe my encryptor on my PDF is broken? I all I've been receiving are Goldilocks like puns. Goldilocks like puns. Is that? Mm -hmm. Oh. Wait a minute. Who wrote these passphrases? Was it the EMF? Were those people the ones who wrote these ridiculous passphrases? If it was them, I will take them apart. I, the greatest criminal mastermind the world has ever known! And, and who is this man living in the train station? Who is this man looking to become the... What are you dressed as, my... Fine script well, reading thread. Excuse me there, Al Pacino. My name is Dr. Biff Studebaker, Professor Emeritus of Psychopharmacology at the University of Phoenix. Well, that I remember. That's deep down in the muscle memory. Yeah. Hi, Larry Hastings, Space Baritone. 
I am dressed as Goldilocks, for I was told this would be a porridge audition. You're looking, you're looking disturbingly like the last five minutes of The Shining there, my friend. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's not even talk about that movie. I thought we were talking about The Saint. Um, all right. Well, I guess you guys are the three guys, so we'll get on the subway and go down to South Philly, and I guess we'll record this thing. Well, I think this is the guy, fellas. Perhaps we should unmask. Uh, hi, I'm Pete Barry. I'm John Dowgan. And I'm Larry Hastings. Oh, Oh, ah. get it off. I'm Michael DeAngelis. The three creators of Mission Rejected? Oh, don't hang that on us. Well, you guys would be great for, like, talking about the saint. (laughs) Let's get into it. Somebody somebody has to be. (laughs) We were born to do this. Let's go. Sounds good. Welcome to What Did We Just Watch, the movie trivia quiz show podcast. Today's episode is about the 1997 American thriller film, The Saint, directed by Philip Noyce and starring Val Kilmer. In this movie, Simon, the Saint Templar, is a thief for hire whose latest job to steal the secret process for cold fusion puts him at odds with a traitor bent on toppling the Russian government, as well as a woman who holds the secrets. I am your host, Mark Nessel. And our contestants this week are Pete Barry. Hi, Mark. Michael DeAngelis. Hey, pleasure to be here. And John Dowgan. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, everyone. Or good morning, if you're listening in the morning. (laughs) And of course, as always, our contestants are playing for this week's mystery prize, which will be revealed at the end of the show. So the Saints. So the Saints. uh, Initial thoughts. I know at least one of you guys were there at the theater when this came out, if I'm correct. I saw The Saint in its initial theatrical run uh, with my then-college girlfriend. I recall being in trouble with her afterwards. Wow. Um, <laughs> As well you should have been. John, for, I feel, like, I feel for, like many of your movie date choices may have ended with you, you in trouble you with are, your girlfriend. You are not wrong about that, but yes, <laughs> I, I am a spy movie nut, uh, died in the wool, mm. and also a huge Val Kilmer fan. And I was I was passingly familiar with the TV series The Saints, so I was all in for. Uh, it might have even been opening weekend, God help me. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was there, and it was it was something then, and it's something now. Yeah, you were not alone. This movie was <laughs> heavily heavily advertised by the. I can't remember who distributed it. But it's Paramount. It's a Paramount movie, yeah. So. Everything about this movie <laughs> screams Paramount 1997. Yeah, definitely. I, I can't – it's hard to uh, qualify that, but there is something about it mm-hmm. that is absolutely Paramount in the 90s. So they did this and Mission Impossible? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they were competing against – so they were competing against themselves. Yeah. This was well. Yeah. When was Mission? That was the 96. year before, right? That yeah, was ninety six. Was the year before? So they were getting into so the they spy were trying business. To... Yes. Already, I feel right at home. That you guys are like bringing in these specifics. <laughs> this is great. Um, so yeah, they were competing with themselves, but they had the IP, and a big right. backer of this movie was Roger Moore, the original Saint right. from the TV show. And the radio voice at the end of this movie. Correct. Yeah. Roger Moore loved this movie, The Saint. And after he was in the TV, he was hell bent on making this a movie. And continued that for literally the rest of his life. He, even more than Bond, really loved being Simon Templar. He really loved The Saint. And I know he, uh, yeah, supported this movie. And then spent the rest of his life trying to revive the saint again. And his last on-screen credit is a a failed pilot uh, of uh, trying to bring the saint back in the late 2000s or early 2010s. 2017, I saw that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think, I think what happened was Roger Moore died and they were like, oh, we've got this sitting around (laughs) because it had been passed and they, they just put it out as a direct DVD Direct to DVD movie, mm-hmm. so God, God bless you, Roger Moore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I, 
how so how much does anybody how much does anybody know about the the saint ip prior to this movie because i don't think this <laughs> like i'm the opposite of john i thought i had seen this movie i had not like it was a fever <laughs> dream i did not know there was a tv show before this i didn't know anything there were, about it, it was first book there were a couple right then an audio right. play like radio yeah. drama like we're talking this is audio turning... play what's that <laughs> then, yeah um a spy audio play who then um That'll there never were fly uh, television shows this movie and then like some of the other stuff and then finally this podcast completing the arc of the exactly saint. this is it this is the <laughs> yeah. end of the saint in history you guys this can is, this is where it we ends. can stop yeah hopefully after yeah. this people yeah. are like you, you know what let's put this ip to bed right it's but crazy to me i just i just wanted to say to compliment what michael said it's crazy roger moore got two bites of the apple for two iconic <laughs> spy ips <laughs> and he didn't get transfixed on james bond he got, he's like no the saint is for me <laughs> that's right he's like yeah that's the better one. well the funny thing is so when once i saw this on stream i can't remember what service we were watching it on it's like would you like to it's see the original saint and i'm like i do so i watched like <laughs> 10 minutes of the first episode of the saint with roger moore i'm like that is certainly Roger Moore, and I am not watching mm -hmm. any more of this. I've had enough of this in my life. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I don't actually have a lot of questions about it because I didn't, like, quantify it. Um, but there are really only two things um, other than the actual, like, character, Time and Templar himself and some of his proclivities that make this, like, the saint. The first <laughs> is the pin at the end right. that she gives. That was sort of right. the insignia of, like, the books and the movies and audio play i guess if they had album art back then um the other one is the volvo car that he drives for some of the movie like bond mm -hmm. had aston martin i believe um yes, yes. yeah um the saint had a mm -hmm. volvo and <laughs> that's he that's was the best. he was a safety conscious safety, safety conscious. conscious yeah he like continental international yeah. thief a continental Euro well, european cars that are safe to drive <laughs> i i what I've seen of the Roger Moore show, um, I've never read a, I've never read a Saint book, and I've never heard um, a radio episode. But I've seen a couple episodes of uh, Roger Moore uh, in the Saint, and yeah, this is pretty different. <laughs> and I actually said to uh, Pete after after we had both watched, I said, if this movie was supposed to launch a franchise <laughs> right. is this like an origin story because in the tv show the saint is very altruistic right right he's sort of a right. robin hood figure which val kilmer <laughs> sort of becomes at the end though it's very unclear if he gave all the money away or kept some for himself but like simon templar sort of an independently wealthy guy who intervenes where where standard justice cannot mm -hmm. like and a saint uh, you yes, and you described Val Kilmer as a as a thief for hire at the start of this movie, and I went, In theory. "Oh, is that In what theory. he was?" Because I, got... yeah, I mean, I'm not entirely sure how he got his hands on the guy's money at the end. Like, I'm like, what skill set did you like? He's going that's, to prison. He's going to Siberia. That's yeah. that's the plot. I, yeah, Pete. That's, that is I actually... a single problem. That is a minor problem. To answer your question, Pete, the superpower he had was this movie was a complete disaster behind the scenes. And right. um, so there was an entirely different right. movie filmed. It was really poorly received. It was months and months of reshoots, thousands and thousands right. of dollars and people flying like to and from all these different locales because they really did shoot in Russia. It was like uh, the sh small window of time after the Cold War that oh, people wow, were yeah. shooting in Russia. They shot on location in England, and there were a couple of other like locations. So this was not a cheap movie to make. So it was directed by um, like Philip Noyce, who I said Noyce. before. Philip Noyce yeah. of yeah. the yeah. Harrison Ford, yeah, Jack Clear Ryan and Present movies. Danger and Patriot Games, as well as a bunch of, including like movies oh, yeah. that deliver. Like I didn't care for Salt. That was like Angelina Jolie, but it made money. Right. Like this if guy knows how to make it, a movie. If you've never seen it, go back uh, late '80s. I think it might even be Nicole Kidman's first film. Philip Noyce made a movie called Dead Calm with with Nicole. No, oh, yeah. right. Kidman, yeah. That was him. I know. Nicole I Kidman, Sam. Yeah. Uh, I actually like Sam Neill and, and Billy Sam Zane. Neil. Sam Neill and Billy Zane. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and of course, we, we haven't done it yet, but it's eventually going to happen. He would also directed 1989's Blind Fury, Another a movie Rucker where Howard. Rucker Hauer plays yep. a blind... Yeah, he plays a blind Vietnam vet who, using his uh, mastery of swordplay, saves the child, the kidnapped child of another. Oh, Vietnam so it's very vet. much, it's very much uh, lone wolf and cub then. Yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> it's Rucker Howard pretending to be blind <laughs> in like sort of a comedy action movie. I can only assume. Um, but yeah, so Philip mm-hmm. Noyce knew what he was doing. And also, Val Kilmer was super marketable at this oh, time, so probably at the height of his power from a market and uh, right after Batman. Right. And Tombstone, oh, yes. Um, he hated – it was actually, like, I think filming order it was right after mm-hmm. Batman, from what I understand, but Tombstone had also just came out. And he was at an emotional low point in his career, according to – I think there was a recent documentary about Val Kilmer. I think they talk about this, mm-hmm. where he – really hated filming yes, Batman. Um, I don't know if it was any one person personally, but it was just a real dark time for him. So yeah, this was a pretty low point on Val, in Val Kilmer's um, like career personally. And so from what I understand, Philip Noyce sort of just gave him free reign to just do whatever he wants. And so Oh, you can <laughs> tell. The, according, according to him, in the most The Island of Dr. Moreau was, treatment, I see. Yeah, Val, Val Kilmer was in the most, like, I forget what the interview is, but Philip Noy said, like, I, I loved working with him. He's a professional. Yeah. All of the disguises were kind of his idea. That scans. So he, he gives Kilmer full credit for better or worse for this. Because um, yeah. the disguises is also not no. a thing in no. The Saint. No, I, there's a reason I didn't <laughs> list that in the things that The Saint has. <laughs> I was, I like I said, my, my I didn't think my list was... Um, enough to warrant a question but i did think i did my research those two things are the the volvo and the pin you take that away it could be val kilmer in mission impossible another one or I was, i'm wondering if it was the success of mission impossible that led them to try mm. to copy some of that um my guess would be no and the only reason is because i think this movie took more than a year to film that's true and so that's the fair. idea that mm. if they were if it came out in 97 and mission right. impossible it might have been the only thing i can think of is they were looking at the dailies of this mission impossible movie and they're like well it's, it was um it's de palma and de palma and like cruz two guys who almost always deliver especially at that point neither of them had kind of like hit their like the bumps in their career cruz would be doing that, I guess, like in about 10 years. Mm-hmm. And De Palma had either just got come, bounced back from like the blowout, or no, yeah, it would just bounce back after um, Pulp Fiction and everything like that. Um, it was where, Bonfire of the Vanities that really, I yeah, think, I, I recall that was De Palma's big. Yeah. yeah, that and Blowout, another Philadelphia movie. That's mm-hmm. why I know a ton about Blowout. <laughs> and people were pretty unhappy with that. But I just remember when. Um, uh, Tarantino was doing press for um, Pulp Fiction. He talked about how much he loved De Palma, and he talked about how much he loved Travolta it, and in that movie Blowout, both of them. And it really caused a lot of studios to give him a second look. But you're right; he had he had a couple of flops between then and like when he started to resurge again in '96. The Saint is a real weird movie that cost a lot of money and did a bad like did bad at the box office and is kind of like an oddity today which makes it perfect fodder uh, for this podcast. Mm-hmm. So I'm very excited to All talk right. about this movie with you guys. Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Well, I, so as you as you mentioned, uh, uh, I didn't realize, though it makes total sense, that this went through a lot of reshoots. So now I wonder, because when you look at her filmography, this is the movie Elizabeth Shue does after she wins her Oscar. But did she maybe not have that Oscar when this started? Did she, did she win? win? I don't Did think she, she win in 96? I'm trying to remember. Because if it is, I'm o- almost certainly she at least signed this before, signed the ink okay. on this okay. before she would have had that Oscar, I don't think almost she, certainly. I don't think she Did she, won. was she just nominated? I think nominated? she was just nominated. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. Elizabeth Shue is a very perplexing character in this movie. <laughs> she was initially in the original movie killed off, poisoned right. by our main bad guy. Right. Audiences hated that, and I can see why, because she, despite, like, making a choice to play kind of an unhinged character who, every time the camera cuts back to her, is doing a different, like, emotion, she is probably my favorite character in this movie. Obviously, Sans, a couple of the saints themselves, 
the disguises. And they have, weirdly, they have good oh, yeah. chemistry. They do yeah. have good chemistry. She Okay, so she was nominated for... She was nominated for everything for leaving Las Vegas, but she didn't win mm-hmm. the Oscar. Yeah, but even still, that performance and that movie, yeah. you'd, you'd think that she would never touch a movie like this, but I'm right. sure the ink was dry on it before that mm-hmm. happened, and I'm sure she got compensated well. Yeah, paycheck like, She a does paycheck. a fine oh, job. She must have been. Yeah, and I think she comes out smelling fine in this. Like, oh, this yeah. is a stinker yeah. of a movie, but yeah, none I of think, it gets on her. I think the problem, I think the, the problem with with her character is like Elizabeth Shue just radiates intelligence <laughs> mm-hmm. and emotional maturity. Mm-hmm. And she's playing a woman who's just wandering with like an ET level of naivete about how yeah. human relationships work. She, <laughs> like she just, like she literally just hatched out of an egg yeah. the day yeah. before and has never yeah. seen a man. She's keeping, <laughs> she's keeping world changing secrets in her bra. <laughs> She's got eight equations, and she can't figure out the order they go in. That's yeah, the, the problem. All, all things we'll definitely get into, but the one thing I did want to say is some scenes she is that naivete, and then mm-hmm. other scenes she seems to have some a crazy emotional intelligence oh, that yeah. doesn't even make sense based off of what we've seen before. Mm-hmm. So yes. we're we're based based on what the like, other characters say. It's like, oh, she's so cagey, and she's so like eccentric. I'm like, I don't know. She's a super attractive, super intelligent <laughs> Like super articulate person who seems easily likable. Yeah. So I'm very confused by that. Like the script doctor in me was going crazy this whole time because mm-hmm. honestly, in the early scenes between Val Kilmer and Elizabeth Shue, I agree they have they have chemistry, and I'm like there is a ge- a germ of a really good idea here. Like I could get on board with there's a really broken guy. And a really awkward scientist who he's catfishing her and like he halfway he gets halfway through it and is like, I can't go through with it. And then he does anyway. And then the guy who he works for comes after them. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and they and she needs him to survive. And I'm like, if she if her reaction was, I hate you so much because you took everything I you know, mm-hmm. this is everything. You completely scammed me right but then grows to understand why he does what he does what a broken person is like there's something that could work there but like he's thrown off so many red flags that i'm like lady (laughs) run like what is happening here like just like he is a north he is a north korean parade in that scene right it's red flag it's insanity like my favorite moment in this entire movie and i'm like and this this, you know like what i wanted to see because the movie was already so far downhill and underwater at this point when she sees the the statue of shelly the like naked greek statue I, and then she turns around and he's there in the same position. I'm like, if he's naked lying behind her, 10 for 10. Like, this movie mm-hmm. wins everything forever if he's naked. He's not, mm-hmm. damn it. All right, forget it. Well, he's almost, but we'll get to that in that scene. Here's the other way my uh, my script doctor brain went. And I know Pete was feeling the same way because we were, we were chatting with each other over Discord as we watched it. And we were like, okay. This is where this movie is going, and it's going to escalate it to another level of insanity. So, yeah, so I was hoping for this ending all the way up, like, through her giving him the pin. She's going to turn out to be the little girl who falls off the balcony from the start of the movie. Oh, wow. Right. Who somehow, somehow survived, and he has spent his whole life thinking he got her killed. But no. Mm-hmm. And they'd be reunited. That would have been so. So, so but no. my my script doctor brain thought nothing nothing quite so dramatic, but I th- I thought there would, there was like a really interesting movie where like the rest of the characters are even halfway as intelligent as uh, the son, <laughs> as you know, uh, Euro right, as yeah. Euro trash mm-hmm. Koketovich, <laughs> and. Um, because my favorite, my favorite scene is with her in the train station. The sun clocks mm-hmm. him immediately. You mean he clocks him <laughs> seven <laughs> times right. immediately? It's him. Each, it's, yeah, it's him. Yeah. It's, Dad, it's him. Yeah. It's him. It's him. Like there's a, there's a, there's an there's a much better movie where he he where he puts on bad disguises <laughs> and nobody cares. <laughs> 
that would have been great. Yeah, that everyone sort of tolerates him. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, well, I don't have a, a script doctor mind like you guys do, but what I do have is the time to go over this movie a couple of times and to write a bunch All of right. trivia questions oh, yes. about it. So how about we get started on that? To start off this movie, um, we're going to go over some of our favorite saints. So I'm going to give you the name of one of the saints, and you guys can buzz in and tell me the two things. And if you only get the one or the other, somebody else can steal. Um, the first thing is tell me the first time we meet this saint. And the second thing is tell me the um, sort of factoid that um, Val Kilmer says about the saint because he is never without a, um, a quip or a one sentence Wikipedia like um, factoid about these uh, saints that he likes to personify. So the first one that I have, um, who is August Christopher? Is August Christopher uh, who he is when he's doing his Doc Holiday voice and he shows up at the airport at the end? Yeah, the embassy at the end. It's like an embassy, embassy airport. So that is the um, August Christopher character. Um, can you remember um, the factoid he gives about him? I cannot. I, I, I zoned out when I realized he was just doing his Doc Holiday voice again. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> uh, that was, in fact, August Christopher's thing. He was Doc Holiday, so that's... <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he had another thing to say. Is, Does is anyone it, remember? Michael. Uh, is it that Saint uh, Christopher is the patron saint of the lost? Uh, no, it's actually not that. Um, Pete, did you have a guess? Uh, now I've got the patron saint of the lost. Um, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. Let me guess. He uh, he uh, was burned alive, but uh, but came back. Just a wild guess. That's, no. That sounds like something some saint must have done at some point. So, Michael, you were on the right track. It is about um, – he's not named after St. Christopher. He's named after St. Augustine. Oh. So his factoid, he says, is named after St. Augustine, who coined my favorite phrase, give me chastity and constancy, but don't give it yet. St. Augustine, the one whose brothers tied him up and sold him to a brothel or something like that? That's totally possible. I didn't look up all the saints before this, believe it or not. I had a hard <laughs> enough time getting all of Val Kilmer's saints straight. But, yeah, I did look up that phrase, and there's, like, a whole, like, like explanation of it. And the explanation's not that great. It's not a particularly interesting story. St. Augustine is, like, a famous scholar, I think. I'm confused at why they chose that particular factoid about him. So, 97, the internet in its infancy. So, someone on set had, like... Sister Mary Sue's Big Book of Saints. Right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, the only site you could go to was that like um, site about like exotic <laughs> pets in like Argentina or whatever. That was the only, that was the internet back then. The the landing page. So that's one point for John, I believe. So Yay. we got the first part. So we'll go to the next um, saint. Mark, is this a bad time for us to confess that we were all raised Catholic? So every single one of these things is a is a a strike against our mortal souls that we can't name what these saints who these saints were much like some of the normal panelists everybody here was also raised catholic but as somebody who went to 12 years of catholic school i would say they don't really talk about a ton of the saints too too That's often true. Yeah. i survived six years but not not 12 yeah and i was thinking to myself like i've definitely heard of like saint augustine there's one or two other ones that I've heard of, but it's like for the, I think there's like six or seven names that he gives. And uh -huh. most of them, they, they're picking pretty obscure saints. And, <laughs> right. and if I did know the factoids about them, they've chosen pretty strange facts that don't really explain <laughs> a lot of them. It's like, it's like I, um, I was confirmed into the um, church as St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of animals. Right. But it would be like giving, like, it's like, oh, I'm St. Francis. I'm named after a saint who talked to a dog that one time or something like right, that. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, there's more to it than that. There's like a whole, like, it's just very strange. I am truly confused about w how they came up with their um, factoids right. about the saints. For instance, this next saint, um, which 
Um, so you have to tell me where and um, what the factoid was for Bruno Hassenfat. So John buzzed in. I'm I'm sure I I I'm certain it was. Uh... That's the name he takes when he's in the German train station, mm-hmm. uh, trying to deceive Trediak and his son Eurotresh Koketovich. Um, that's that just Kilmer's delivery of the name is mm-hmm. burned into my psyche forever uh, and may never and may never leave. Oh, you better believe um, that I went online <laughs> and checked the spelling on that because I did not trust his pronunciation. <laughs> so but I um, absolutely. I yeah. absolutely cannot remember the factoid because once again I was just stunned in mm-hmm. disbelief. Yeah, do you either you guys remember the factoid he gives? This one is a bit like a uh, so memorable. Mhm. Oh. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I was also stunned into <laughs> submission no. like John. All right. Well, unfortunately then you guys have to hear my Bruno impression here. A saint excellent. a saint was oh, a very excellent. wealthy man. Had the wine, had the women, the song, and then inexplicably <laughs> took a vow of poverty and became a hermit and went off and lived in the forest in the nude. If you had said in the nude, I would have like, taken it because I'm pretty sure that's the <laughs> right. only. Yeah, that's the he, only. Saint he was Catholic a real girly story, yeah. man, you know. Oh yeah, very very <laughs> '90s Euro like coded. Now is the time on sprockets when we dance. This fits right into my rewrite of where she, Elizabeth Shue turns around and Val Kilmer is just lying there naked. He's like, what? Did you not hear of St. Bruno who no. went into the forest nude? <laughs> well, there, he, he, she met a hornier saint, apparently. Right. We'll get yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, so it might be this next saint. Um, do any of you guys remember where we first met John Baptiste Rosie? Okay. I believe that's the name they try to give him in the orphanage. Yep. The first time we hear that oh, name is right. in a flashback, and I included it because there is a pithy factoid about the saint. Um, do you remember the factoid that the, uh, the evil priest says? This is the only one I'm going to get. Like the pre- I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, but yeah, the evil priest is like, you're John Rossi, say your name. Uh, I'm going to go for a wild guess. It'd be, was he... Was he uh, <laughs> Was he tortured? Was it? Was was he? What, did, was someone trying to get something out of him? Uh, no, I'm Saint sorry. Rossi, does Saint it, John Rossi? No. Does somebody else want to give that a try? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get it exactly right, but it had something to do with his with his wealth. Did he give away his wealth? He's like that's a, exactly right. Yes. right. Again, um, because this movie wants to be the origin to a Robin Hood esque franchise mm-hmm. that will never materialize. No. So he says, "You're named after John Baptist Rosie, a, Capuch- a Capuchin priest who gave away all his possessions." <laughs> and that it's like, and I'm surprised every time he stops talking, like lightning bolts don't like shoot out from behind him or something. He's like a true. <laughs> evil catholic priest in this like um so we've got a couple of more oh sorry is it weird that capuchin the only thing i for uh, i associate the word capuchin with is monkeys and i'm like he was a capuchin but he's like a monkey priest like he just (laughs) yeah he gave away all of his he was a monkey that's what i should have said oh yeah the thing about john baptist rossi he was a monkey yeah he gave his life he loved his he loved strong coffee he gave his life serving medical science that capuchin monkey um that's what and that and that's why we've canonized him. Um, so the next saint that we have is, who is Vincent Ferrer? Is that his persona when he's on the plane? No, I'm afraid <sighs> that's not. Do one of you guys have a guess? It's Vincent? I take a wild Vin- guess because I can't remember. That seems most likely to be the catfishing Elizabeth Shue persona. But I don't think I don't know where was she, that. Oh, he's oh he's when, when oh oh when in, he's in, when he's the 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 you know the uh, the, the horny Shelley. yeah yeah no that's not him no. either. Okay. Nah. Uh, do you have a guess, John, or no? So Vincent Ferrer is the name that he uses when he's returned to Moscow in the Moscow hotel when Elizabeth Shue confronts him. She's, it's Vincent Ferrer, named after a saint who betrayed his f- best friend. Which, they're not <laughs> best right. friends, 
They they don't know each other. If anything, like she doesn't know anything about him really. Um, yeah. So no no one gets points for that one. But this next one, um, you knew it was coming. So ready your buzzers. Who is Thomas More? No. John. All right. So Thomas More was the name he was under when he catfished her at the Shelley statue. This and the Shelley Monument. I remember, yeah. he, was his factoid just that he was martyred for his faith? Or was there more? Yeah. Okay. A, a saint who died for his faith. Yes. Like, um, the South which African. gets her so hot. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you, there is yeah. one way into this girl's pants, and it's <laughs> martyrdom. Yeah, so, believe it or not, there are a couple of disguises that Val Kilmer dons in this movie that are not saint based. So to mm-hmm. buzz in for this, can somebody name the three non saint disguises that Kilmer utilizes in this movie? Michael? All right, I, I'm gonna take a wild guess. The his old man scientist character that he uses twice in the movie. Mm-hmm. The Euro trash Russian guy on the plane when he's no. with no okay so somehow I didn't include no, that I guy. remember oh uh, I remember that one so the reason is um, Martin Deporis was on here and I accidentally scrolled past him <laughs> so uh, okay I'm going because I didn't include Martin Deporis a Peruvian saint uh, who could well, cure the sick and injured by the laying of hands. I'm going to give you another shot at okay. that because I should have included that. And I, my apologies to Martin Deporez stands out there who were waiting <laughs> with bated breath for him to be included. And so, somehow Mark made a mistake. So you got one of the three so far. There are uh, two other disguises. The Russian at the top of the movie. The Russian at the top of the movie. So his yes. his yeah. first disguise. Mm-hmm. He's like the yeah. the security guy. Yeah, there are a couple of Russians ones. Those ones all count kind of as one. And so, can you name one more? Because um, there's actually four. Because I actually didn't okay. include the Russian one. But you're absolutely right. The many Russian disguises that he wears, nondescript Russians. Um, and actually, there's two. Clearly, I didn't think of all. Of them. There's, there's, um, there's, there's three more. There's three. I was, you thinking, named, I was thinking. Yeah, there's, there's three more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, if um, if you can get one more, I'll give you the points, and then either of you guys can come in with the other ones. Uh. Okay. I don't so, think so. So, um, you got two. Let's see. There's three more that I can think of. So we've already said the nerd character. We've already said the um, the various Russian disguises that he put on. But I can think of three more that he comes on. I think John is the next one buzzed in. Right. Oh, 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 God. I just thought uh, of one. Sorry. Well, we'll see how it yeah, shakes we'll out. See I normally get people out. points. Yeah, like, well, no, see. go ahead. A, yeah. see. I might be overthinking it. After he jumps off the roof with the at the beginning with the microchip, he becomes the drunk Russian guy in the street. And then immediately, that's one and then immediately them. ditches that for the uh, the photographer. Yeah, the, the red, tourist the touristy photographer in yeah. Red Square. I was kind of considering that one, okay. so yeah, you definitely got Are one. We, we're considering we're considering when he actually dresses up as Trediak as the Rade Serbegia character. Yeah, yep. And then there's one more that it's it's hard for me to not like like uh try to get you guys on because it's a it's an important scene in my opinion it may only be a couple of seconds long but oh it's, it's very um to me. it's the mrs doubtfire moment when he's the when yes, he's the, the mrs doubtfire for... moment oh my god <laughs> get away from us witch imagine the gall i mean he also like as you pointed out he also wears a bunch of like kind of the same russian disguise but the three that i had written down were the nerd character uh, Trechkiak, Trechiak, and then the Russian maid. And so then there I are these, think, a lot of like nondescript ones. I think I've got one more, and it's a unique, oh, wow. it's a unique one because he does not go in disguise. It's just he's on the phone. Oh. But he plays like a stock bro, Ooh. or he's oh, an art. Yeah. art uh, it's, er, it's early in the film. He has the. The, he's he has a voice. His, uh, he has a voice for money. He's talking to his he's handler, trying yeah. to. He's trying to get to his 50 million. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, 
Um, and yeah, he's got like this, uh, you know, like he's in Wall Street. He's got this mm-hmm. very stock broy uh, kind of thing going. And he's like, oh, you won't regret it, you know, like, and he's mm-hmm. like doing this deal with some unknown person mm-hmm. and his his money tally, you know, rolls up again. And I think it's at that point he goes, just can't get yes. to 50 million. Yeah, I, I was looking for when he actually, like, puts on the fake mustache and, like, the, the dress and stuff like that. But, yeah, he does a lot of voices and disguise. He really leaned on his Juilliard um, training in this movie. <laughs> really classical. So, um, yeah, I think each of you guys earned a point for that. Sorry, Pete. Um, but um, that we've got... Um, so I wanted to introduce some of the characters because obviously we'll be talking about them. So let's actually get into the movie. So I've got a couple of questions right off the bat. We open up. Um, does anybody remember what the opening like card thing says? Oh, or uh, opening- it's unforgettable. Yeah. Okay, and we'll, we're going to have to go with Pete because he buzzed in first. <laughs> this was one of my favorite things. It is. Uh, it takes place in – do I have to say them in order? It tells you where and when. It tells yeah, you – Yeah, whatever, yeah. It, it took place yesterday, uh, and it took place in the Far East. Uh, it's it, The producers really wanted to let you know that it took place within this very specific 24-hour period and somewhere on the largest landmass on the planet. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And again, they they don't sound English. So I was like, oh, the Far East of no, like, right? the, the U.S., <laughs> like in New England or something like that? There's like, like I think... I think like two Asian kids in that orphanage. I don't know what is it's going on here. It's a weird mix. Sort of cor- uh, like there's mm-hmm. colonial. There's, I don't yeah, know what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's supposed to be Nepal or Vietnam or something. <laughs> and I believe this is actually another part that's accurate to the saint mythology that he was raised in the East. Um, right. Uh, I don't think the stuff about the Catholic school is, is any part yeah. of it. There's a bunch of... <laughs> Uh, Asian boy students, but I don't, I don't think there are any Asian girl students. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's a, clearly a mix, and clearly, right? It, the the impression is that mm-hmm. it's they're orphans, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, they're definitely so, orphans. So, so my next question is: Does anybody remember the name of the orphanage? <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> it's like Saint, like Saint Bastards of the. <laughs> Saint bastards of the damned children. Well, uh, that <laughs> whatever you're coming up with is a better title for a movie than this yeah. one. So, J- John, that would have been the title <laughs> if the priest had his druthers. We haven't in- really introduced him yet, but no, it's got a more traditional Catholic orphanage um, name. The name of the orphanage is Saint Ignatius. Um, and then, um, but yeah, as you were saying, like. Um, this was the beginning of my confusion about this movie because it's, if it takes place in the Far East, anywhere other than the United <laughs> States, a lot of people in the Far East apparently speak English. People in Russia speak English. People in this flashback speak English. In fact, it's pretty rare when we hear a language that's not English in this movie <laughs> that's kind of a globe So, So movie. not not to be a, a saint apologist. <laughs> But I would venture to say that, you know, ye- yesterday in the Far East, a colonial <laughs> Catholic institution probably did literally beat English yes. into mm-hmm. their students. Oh, right. So yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah. That I'm like – now the fluency in which these children spoke English yeah. and why these two blonde-haired British – Right. Children um, mm-hmm. ended up in a Far East orphanage. Mm-hmm. I I do not have an answer for, but yeah, I I, I think that English was the 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 language of the day, uh, mm-hmm. if not Latin. Yeah, you. It's Mark, crazy. I didn't want to. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't want to ruin it. But are you? Were you going to ask about the second title card? Um, I. Was go I wasn't going to ask about uh, it, I, but yeah, well, well, you weren't gonna ask I was gonna, about it. I was not I was gonna, gonna s- ask about it, but I was gonna bring it up. I promise, but because we, we oh, haven't okay. even got, but yeah, I'll let we're you still, get to it. I'll it's let you still get to yesterday, it. Pete. We, right. still, we haven't okay, gotten good. to tomorrow. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, trust me, I, I've got a long script. I, <laughs> right. I don't, I don't, I don't miss a lot except Martin Depore is unfortunately, um, but. 
the what but to your point michael they do speak a lot of english and in fact they even use old timey like insults like english insults does anybody remember the old timey insult that the priest used on the kids which oh, i geez. was looking it up a little bit it seems like a thing that you shouldn't be saying if you're a catholic priest <laughs> yeah no did I anybody clock this or is this just me after reviewing this at the so he calls the um I, th I forget if he calls the group or just um, uh, Simon Templar a cur, which is an old timey oh, term, yeah. which means like a mutt or a mongrel, which I do think right. is very specifically. I do like remember that, Angela, that you say it. like English. Yeah, yeah. So again, not only is this it's, guy speaking, yeah, it's which Shakespearean. He, yeah, yeah. These yes. guys, this priest hates kids. Like this guy doesn't just like. He's not a tough love guy. He's like. Nothing would bring him more joy is just to murk these kids. It's like truly, right. again, I, I didn't go to Catholic school when like my dad was when, and my mom was when like there was corporal punishment. But I, right. even the old nuns and the old priests who were like kind of a vestige of yesterday who were like still teaching seem to at least kind of like kids, like on some level. This, this guy hates kids. You'd think you could get a transfer or something like that. He... I think this probably is his transfer. This is oh, like, yeah. <laughs> this is like, get this guy out of here. Yeah. Um, yeah. We gotta gotta send him to the far east. Um, yeah. uh, he was I in also, the east, but they like sent him even further. I was impressed. <laughs> Something that struck me is, uh, you know, he sends all the girls to bed, and then he puts all the boys in the cafeteria and locks mm -hmm. the food in a cage, and it is mm -hmm. the most luscious looking meal yeah oh that yeah any catholic or orphanage has ever served like was that like an entire week's worth of food <laughs> that he put in that cage and why would you store food in a cage in a cage where humans can't get to it but mice and any other vermin right. can get to it like get i think he was food. hoping for that he was like yeah. that's part of the punishment it's like well, you're gonna watch the mice eat it kid yeah. i actually thought the logic there was uh to let them smell it. I guess. But that might yeah. just be... Like, smell what you, you must have love. It really came across in this movie. I'll say that. The, uh, the uh, plan that was being... That was hatched by this priest as to why the food mm. was in that cage. Yeah, well, anyway, we start to get in this, like, scene of glimpse at our buddy, or uh, Simon Templar, who we're going to be following around. He won't acknowledge his name, he instead takes the name of, um, I guess, like a, a magician in like Catholic lore. Um, he does some quick sleight of hand pickpocketing, and he's able to free all the food from the cage. Then he puts on a cape, which is some like iconography that he never utilizes later mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, it's great. Like as he's coming up, all the all the boys are like going like food, 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 like as if they had rehearsed it or something like that it's like, such a bizarre I, it is such a bizarre moment because he hasn't done anything yet and they're like no. do they know he's gonna do it or are they are they like begging him to say i'm john rossi or it doesn't make any sense now the cape thing which made me howl with laughter right he's wearing a cape as if he is simon magus the magician mm -hmm. um but it has the Red Cross of the Templar Knights, the book that he is right. reading, mm -hmm. shoved into his into his Bible. And I love that the priest is angry. How dare you read this other piece of Catholic <laughs> literature mm -hmm. um, and not your little big little boy's big book of saints? Um, uh, yeah. So it's very weird. I mean, they he took a moment, right? He freed the food, and everyone's like, "Let's go save the girls." And he's like, "Yeah, one sec. I'm just gonna." get uh this sheet i'm gonna paint a, a knight of the templar cross on it and then we're gonna go mm -hmm. to this uh caged area there's so many cages in this orphanage <laughs> this orphanage is like built like a zoo there's so many like except where what part is not caged the part you could easily plummet <laughs> off of mm -hmm. well right. you don't need a cage where there's railing railing, railing like, right that, yeah yeah the only Things that aren't in a cage are the dogs, Presu or presumably there's a kennel somewhere else. So right. they they go up to rescue the girls, and um, 
I actually don't have this written down. Does anyone remember the name of the girl oh, yeah. that he like? Uh, uh, is it Agnes? Oh yes, Agnes. Yeah. Yes, Agnes. Again, a character who seems to have a bigger impact on him than Elizabeth Shue for most of this movie. <laughs> and that's like, why Elizabeth Shue should have turned out to have been Agnes. Maybe Agnes. she has amnesia. She doesn't remember what happened to her. <laughs> that's in the sequel they were planning. Yeah, may, uh, or maybe it's a situation where she doesn't recognize him. And but then when he shows his like tool, the like tool that he used, like it would have been a reveal yeah. or something like that. Somebody get uh, Philip Noyce on the phone. We fixed this movie 30 years no. later. Yeah, we're too I late. Mean, it, the only thing we could do say, is rant like, about it for a few hours. Like, I know I'm thick sometimes when I'm watching movies, but this was the part that confused me the most. Mm -hmm. Is he like, is he caught? At the end of this scene, like, it's kind of just like she falls to her death in the middle of the escape. And then it's like, okay, and then that scene's done. And you're like, so are we led to believe that he then escaped or that they he caught tell, him and he then escaped? He says it to her later on and later. when he's recovering from, uh, from f almost freezing to he death. Does? He does? Okay. I think he doesn't realize what he's saying. He says, now, right, he, right. he says she died and then I escaped. Now, he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily... He doesn't. Oh, okay. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, but I believe you. It was the same night. Like at some point. He right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. again was information right. we would see brought out in the sequel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have I have written down here. Somebody's going to jail for murdering that no. girl, right? Like no, no, no. no, no, no. First of all, uh, I mean, who? Yeah. <laughs> who <laughs> not yesterday in the Far East. Yeah, yeah. Who oh, really dog. killed yeah. her? Right. It's the dog. Right, the priest lets the dog. <laughs> well, loose. that dog, is your honor. Right <laughs> like, like you're really, you're really like arguing for this guy. I, I, I do think that it was the priest's fault, or at least the movie makes like leads us right? to believe that. <laughs> and so, no, but like that child right. had no family. I'm yeah, sure I guess they, you're right. they <laughs> probably beat young Val Kilmer. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they blamed him, beat him senseless, and then, uh, you know, for all I know, they threw him out into the. The, the wilds of, of the Far East, and he raised mm -hmm. himself. Oh, like Batman <laughs> Begins, and then he like, yeah. yeah. And then he had to go even further east. <laughs> so right. eventually, eventually... So eventually he, he was in the West. Yeah, and well, eventually <laughs> he kept walking east until we make it to Moscow tomorrow. But actually, that's the end of the first round. So at the end of the first round, um, we've got John in the lead with four points followed by Pete and Mike, who are both tied at two points. Um, so I can't can keep... believe I have that many. <laughs> <laughs> I can't either. I think you gave me a little boost from Agnes, maybe. Well, there it is. The first round of What Did We Just Watch? The Saint. If you want to find out if I make an amazing come from behind and take total victory, then you need to listen to the entire episode. You can listen to What Did We Just Watch wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, other movies that they have recently uh, tackled include Demolition Man, The Masters of the Universe, and Return to Oz, Nightmare Fuel for Any Child of the 80s. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, dalliance into the world of Val Kilmer. We'll be back again next month with who knows what, a little holiday cheer and... 2024 is just around the corner with an all-new season of Mission Rejected. While I have your attention, I want to make a quick plug for our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can join our Patreon and get all of our episodes in advance and ad-free. If you join at higher levels, there's also all sorts of other perks, including bonus audios, dossiers, and the chances to interact with the creators and the cast. So do check it out at patreon.com slash mission rejected and you can get ad free episodes uh, two days before they come out to the general public. I hope you're all doing well. We head into the holiday season. I hope that you are safe and with your families and we will see you again real soon.